Hello there, and welcome to Vault Hunters Update 9. Hope you're having a wonderful day. If you notice on the screen, we have an armor overlay. This is the Inventory HUD Plus mod. If you want to configure it, change a few things, go to Options, Controls, Keybinds, and uh, Search Inventory. You want to find the Inventory HUD Plus open configs right um default is O. so press O, and this brings up you have the inventory hud off and on turn that on it shows you what's in your inventory that'd be uh quite annoying in my on my screen but you also see you have inventory armor potions curiosities and you can move stuff around now it starts with scale at point, I keep clicking by it, point zero 0.05. And you'll notice this whenever you change your scale. That's the uh, magnet glitching out. Uh, to fix that, just toggle move all and it changes it. I want this on scale one so we can actually see easier. But again, got to toggle this off and on. And there we go. Now we can see everything. Pop on our helmet. You can see the helmet durability. And this way you can track your durability better. And if you ever see it get into the red, I think it's about 10%. Let's test that. I'm sure I have a piece of armor that is about to break somewhere around here. Ah, here we go. This will definitely have a change. There we go. Yeah. So red is at least at 6%. Probably, probably around 10%. But you ever see it go into the red? You know, you might want to take it off so it doesn't break. We have a new book, the quest book. And this gives you a bunch of quests to do. And it uh, will help you get started or it's a uh, way to get a free skill point. You can also access them by going to your vault screen and clicking quests. So you don't need to carry the book on you all the time. We have a lot of skills to look through. I already know a few of them that I'm going to go with. Then we have our talents. I think I'm going to want to go with Frostbite. This sounds perfect for me along with the Javelin. But well, we're going to look at that in a few minutes. We also have three new things to research. Alchemy's potions, mixtures, and brews. This gives us vault potions. Okay, I found a few items. For us to look at, we have the Vault Enchanter, which will allow you to enchant all your items without needing villagers. So all my villagers up there are kind of redundant now. We have our Alchemy Table, which we will unlock with the first research. Yeah, Alchemy Table costs two research points to unlock it. So we might go and do that with some of our saved up research and then we actually do have the vial i found it this is the first level potion as far as i'm aware if that requires brews that requires mixture so this is the first one and there are two types there's the kill potion and there is the time potion we are one Inscription piece short of making the mine inscription. So I'm going to go quickly run a vault, get that last piece, and then we'll be back to do our first mine room. Before we jump into the vault, though, let's actually see about applying some of these expertise and abilities and talents. Let's see expertise. I definitely want to get bounty three so I can have two active bounties. Especially since if we look at my bounty table quickly, we have two mining bounties and we're about to run a mine vault. So I might as well make sure I can get both done at the same time. There we go. Bounty three. That leaves us with seven more. I don't think I'm going to go with fortune or experienced. Might go with one level and lucky, but that will... We can hold off on that for now. Unbreaking is very good. 
Bartering. Angel. I'm not going to use. Artisan is very good. I don't have any affinities so far since I've been extremely unlucky with those. So I'm not going to worry about that right now. Actually, wait a sec. That's base affinity. That's what this gives, right? Yeah. Oh, actually, that may help me actually. <clears throat> actually, that may help me unlock reputation better. I might actually put one point in. Okay, I just said actually four times. All right, let's grab one divine. I don't have any trinkets. I'll hold off on that for now. Let's get two of infuser because that will allow me to, well, have a 40% chance of not putting a negative modifier on when I make a cat, uh, when I apply a catalyst to a crystal. That's, that's awesome. Uh, mystic. Chance of, uh, lowers the chance of a crystal becoming cursed or a modifiable. Modifiable. Let's put one in for now. I'm going to be doing more crafting. So let's put one point in here. And let's put one point in here. That leaves us with one more point to spend. Mystic. Infuser. Unbreaking. I could, I could do it without the lucky altar for now. I've got enough farms that I'm getting everything I need with the exception of um, wither stars, but those are, uh, they're not, they're not hard to farm, especially when you do so much damage with a, a vault sword and you're not going to be getting 200 wither stars, at least not at my level. I would put a point into trinket, but I still do not have a trinket. If we get a trinket in the next three, four levels, I'll worry about putting the next point into trinket, but for now. Oh, I don't know if I want Mystic or Infuser to level three. Yeah, let's put in Mystic. That means that there's a much higher chance of making this Mind Crystal I'm going to make in a little bit. Just completely overpowered. We have 12 Plentiful with the negative modifiers. And then I know we have a few Plentiful with no modifiers. Yeah, two with no modifiers. So that's 14 Plentiful Catalysts that we can potentially put on our crystal. So this can be a very good run when we actually get it done, provided it doesn't, you know, do something stupid like break on me. With this, it's much less likely to become cursed or unmodifiable. So that, you know, prevents it from breaking. Before I go run a vault just to get one inscription piece, we have a crate right over here from a completion. Might as well pop it open to see if it has an inscription piece in it. And it looks like it does. Or is that piece of silver? Ah, uh, that was a silver. We're gonna have to run one vault just to get one inscription piece, which kind of stinks because I wanted to run my first vault on camera. And if I'm also doing a mine room, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to squeeze both of them on camera. Because, you know, I'm gonna want to test out all these skills. Oh, well, we'll figure it out as we go. Let's put this build together. First and foremost, I want two points of speed. That gives me speed two. I also want to get frostbite. Yeah, frostbite. So I'm going to need to aim to get something with slowness effect on it. We'll hold off that, but we definitely want to save four points for frostbite. I'm also going to want at least two points in sorcery. They'll probably boost that more. I'm going to want javelin and lucky hit. Lucky hit, I'm definitely going to want some leech life and some mana steel. But let's head over here to the skills, uh, abilities, heal. Naturally, we're going to want... Let's go with heal three. That gives us four, um, four hit points, so two hearts every nine seconds. Let's grab two points in vein minor. It gives me 16 blocks. Dash. Let's get one, two dash for now. Get one in totem. And then we're gonna want javelin. 
and you get two levels of javelin the second level gives you three knockback two cooldown let's grab that and now i can either grab piercing which will reduce the damage i do scatter i'd have to play with scatter uh not interested in sight but we're definitely gonna go with javelin we have to go with fear uh, with taunt because i have the helmet that gives us 100 percent mana reduction but do we want taunt, which will increase our damage? Or do I want to go with charm? Specialize in charm. Uh, that will allow me to charm two targets. That should be three. All right, that'll let me charm four targets every 40 seconds, but it's for free. And it'll last for eight seconds. I don't know if I'm going to need mana shield. I'm going to hold off on that one for now. Power. We can th uh, throw with more power. Damage increases damage. Uh, conduct. Gives your javelin the conducting power. Making it, be able making it able to transfer any on hit effect. Especially lucky hit. Uh, to the throw. That might work with frostbite. An ethereal gives it a chance of using no mana. All right, let's put one point in ethereal, two points in damage. So now it'll do 100% of my sword damage or 100% of my damage. Throwing power, let's give that, let's give it one for now. Let's give it one conduct, conducting. And then we're gonna want one point in leech life, one point in mana steel. That can either give me Fatal Strike or Cleave. Cleave could be useful. You know, let's go with mana. Uh, no, I've got bonus mana from Sorcery. Let's go with Cleave. I can always reset. Strength is one point. Haste is one point. So let's get Haste one. Strength two. That leaves me nine points. So let's grab all four into that. I haven't grabbed any hunter yet. Let's grab one point of hunter. That leaves me with four. All right, we'll figure out what we want to spend those other four on as we go. But now I actually can move with a bit of speed again. And I'm going to have to change all my keybinds. That's not too bad. Oh, that must have been an ethereal one because it was blue. Yeah. Oh, and they boosted mana regen. So your mana regen is now 100% instead of 75%, which effectively means you regen one mana per second. At 120%, I regen 1.2 mana every second. Okay, we're going to run in just like this. I have put a soul flame on this. Just in case I make any mistakes, which ends up costing me. And um, I've hotkeyed, I've re hotkeyed all of my skills. So hopefully I don't mess anything up. And by mess anything up, I mean hit the wrong key. If I get a mine room, I'm going to lose it. Oh, what we got? We got um, collapsing. Ooh, that's going to be annoying. Opulent and well, I already know about afterlife. Faster in water, but that was kind of crazy. The skeleton was just bouncing everywhere. Ah, coins give nothing again. Right, okay, I gotta remember to use that one.
Oh, hey, I got the pickup notifier working. Awesome. Oh, wow, I just got two gold from that pile. Okay, that was interesting. Um, yeah, collapsing sucks. Don't do it. Ever. But I got the final inscription piece I needed. And now I'm going to take a minute, put everything away, and craft up a mine room. We have our seal of the architect here. We have our crystal. Let's start building, this, building ourselves. Architect Vault. That gives zero. We're just going to toss that on right away. That gives us 33, and this is worth 18. So we need 62. All right, we're at five minutes. 47. I need 15 more completion. What well, gives me that will give me 15 and give me an additional two minutes and 10 seconds. What other good combinations do I have? Now let's do with these. Oh, it's got it got its first curse. We got a mine room now with 10 minutes. And let's grab all of our catalysts. Well, not all of them. We want our plentifuls. We want our plentifuls, which are free. And grab our extended with uh, no penalty on it. Two X plentiful. Let's add. Add the extended that will give me 11 minutes plus the one minute from my um, relics. So that'll give me 12 minutes. Let's start adding. Ah, that did not give me a negative. Nice. I got another curse, but still only too plentiful. I mean, uh, but no negative still. That gave me a negative and a third curse. All right, six. Seven, three curses, one negative. Four curses. Oof. Okay, let's grab my moats. Reveals all curses and let's grab our four purities. Doesn't mean we're going to use all four purities. Depends on what the curses are.
Weakened. Mining fatigue. Locked and volcanic. Uh, yeah, we want to get rid of the mining fatigue. Uh, volcanic's gone. I'm going to have to figure out how this affects it. Give me a second. Okay, so apparently I can't add. I said 62 and then added my architect, so I was only at 80. Well, 80 something. So that's been remedied. It's now at 100. Locked does not have any effect while in a architect vault since the objective of the architect vault is to exit the vault. So it doesn't matter if it's locked. And uh, so, yeah, we have. What's that going to be? 13 and a half minutes about. Eight X plentiful chunky, which is going to be mean absolutely nothing. And oh, eight X plentiful. I'm still not seeing a ton of. We're going to try something a little different with this vault. Now, I realize watching me run around in almost complete silence for 15 minutes is the absolute height of entertainment. Let's try something a little different. I am really liking this new skill and expertise system. The javelin is fun. And honestly, I would recommend it with pretty much every build, especially if you include the conducting talent, which will allow it to proc things like, you know, clouds, leech life, mana, and any of the lucky hit effects. It will synergize with almost every build. Additionally, I love Taunt Charm. It works, well, like a charm. Um, I have to see if I'll spec out of it once my helmet breaks, because I'll no longer get the 100% free mana cost. But I think I'd probably even use it with the full mana cost. But considering my helmet has 1800 durability and five repair slots, I don't think I'm gonna have to worry about that for quite a while. Now, something I've been struggling with off camera is getting anything with the slowness cloud modifier. I've rolled a dozen idols at this point and I've re-rolled them each about a dozen times. I'm just not getting slowness. Additionally, I absolutely destroyed the sword that I currently had trying to get slowness modifier and fixing the fact that it technically did more damage than was allowed to do with the new update and I've just absolutely no luck and I need that because the talent I picked up of frostbite uses slowness to proc when a mob that you have hit yeah when you hit a mob that is affected by slowness it has a chance of being frozen solid and then hitting them again will kill them in one shot I don't know what to call the other skills like uh, Frostbite. I'm calling them like com Combat Augment Talents. Uh, Nucleus, which uh, has a chance of spawning a Nova upon killing a stunned mob. So you have to have Nova spec for that. Then you have Days, which will give you a damage boost against stunned mobs. Useful if you've got a stunning build going. Uh, Blizzard, which is the opposite of Frostbite, will cast Frost Nova whenever you hit a slowed mob. Now, Frost Nova does have a lower chance of proccing compared to Nucleus and the um, Toxic Reaction, but unlike those two, you don't need to have Nova spec in order to have the Nova skill trigger. So it's uh, almost a free skill, granted it has a lower chance of proccing. And then as Iskal's been showing off his toxic reaction build, uh, you kill a mob that's poisoned and it will cause a poison cloud, uh, sorry, poison nova to spawn on them, which if that kills a poisoned mob, 
will spawn another poison cloud. Sorry, poison nova again and just go on and on. Which is awesome for clearing large amounts of mobs, but unless they fixed it, I think there's a small issue with that. See, in update 8, if you killed a mob by poison, healing cloud, or um, wither effect, they did not drop elixir. Or at least I never noticed them dropping elixir, and I actually tested it a few times. I haven't had a chance to test it now in update 9, but if that's still the case, you might be essentially robbed of elixir by using that skill. I hope they fixed it. We'll have to find out. And then we have the totems. I have just the totem one for healing. I think really to get the the minimum best effect out of it, you're going to want level three. Because that'll give you between 12 and 16 block radius. You could drop that right outside a dungeon and have pretty much full coverage while you're in the dungeon. Which make which will make clearing the dungeon much easier. I will probably only stick with the healing or the mana versions. I, the, the damage one can be cool, but it's got a, such a low tick and such a low damage output that especially if you're fi fighting the quote unquote trash mobs, you can pretty much one or two shot them with your sword already. So why drop a totem that's going to take 50 seconds to kill them? Another skill I specced into off camera is the Empower Ice Armor. This is the specialization of Empower. It costs four mana, four mana per second to keep up. That's not a lot, but it creates a slowness aura around you. I'm going to have to uh, test this, but if that procs the Blizzard and Frostbite abilities, then that's a perfect combo. It does have a long cooldown, so uh, it's a six second cooldown. So once you put it up, you don't have to wait a while if you drop it to bring it back up. So if you can get your mana regen up to at least 400%, you can leave it on the entire vault. And last, we really have the expertise. They're awesome. I love them. But in my non-expert opinion, I really think with your first four, so by level 20, you want to aim for maxing out Bounty Hunter and probably getting one point into the Vine so you can get the boosted affinity for the God Altars. Uh, you can make the argument for trying to get the uh, Infuser and the Mystic. But I don't think that's necessary since you're not going to be getting catalysts before level 20. And you're not really going to have enough catalysts to start making catalyst crystals until you're really closer to level 30. And so you might as well, you know, wait until then before start procking, um, investing expertise into Mystic and Infuser. Now off camera, I did also... Increase dash to level 3. Previously, I had it at 2. I mentioned it in power to level 2. I dropped the vein miner. I brought it up to 3 for this vault. I dropped it back down to 2, which is 16 blocks. I increased javelin's damage to level 3, which gives it a total damage of 110%. And boosted its power to 2, so it flies farther. And I gave myself strength 3. And that's all my skill points allocated as of level 52 plus the one you get for the quest book yeah Seventeen thousand experience 414 ores mined oh that was nice how much of each did I get? Six bogum bogum bombing night, fifty seven pay night, four upaline, twenty four alexandrite, seventy beniatite, four pizza night, one sparkle teen, no puffium, huh? One ashium, three escalium, three gorgonite, 
163 Laramar, 3 Tubium, 17 Black Opal, 10 Xenium, 47 Wutadite, and no Echo. You completed this vault without any healing. Discovered the last sight transmog. Oh, wow. Um, spoiler alerts for a transmog, apparently. That was fun, although I could have probably done it a lot quicker if I had actually more durability. Oh, well, things to learn from. All right, so before we go, I did go craft up a new tool. Uh, gilded ornate living coins. It's got axing on it. 47% trap disarm and 7.3 item quantity. Um, I'm going to be using these, the chopper mostly for the wooden chests and the machete for everything else. If I have this plus my helmet equipped, we'll see that my quantity well, my trap disarm is at 65%. That's pretty good. But my item quantity is now at 20%. So every, every five chests, I'm essentially getting a sixth chest for free. Should hopefully mean I can get more stuff quicker. And uh, that's going to be very important since... We used our last inscription piece making that mine room so i am completely out of inscription pieces and i'm almost completely out of inscriptions so i'm gonna have to run a couple vaults and hopefully get quite a lot of them but that's gonna be it for today i hope you've enjoyed hope you like what i did with the uh voiceover for the mine it was gonna be too boring otherwise and uh i hope you have a wonderful day i'll see you next time later